We are here at the Hopkinton Middle School Library to talk with Jamvi Puri, who will soon be graduating from the eighth grade. In her few years, she already has a great deal to offer in her writing and her perspective on life. And so we've asked her to share a bit of this with us today. Hello, John V. Uh, thank you for meeting with me this afternoon here in, oh, almost time for uh, summer to begin. Just a few more days of uh, school left here at the Hopkinton Middle School, right? Yes, that's correct. Uh -huh. We'll be ending next week uh, on June 28th. Ah, yes. Uh, a little bit later because of the snow and all this year. Right? Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. And as I understand, this is your last year at the middle school? Yes, that's correct. Uh, we will be transmit transitioning to the ninth grade. Ah, well, and graduating, right? That's correct. Uh huh. Well, graduation. Uh, congratulations for your graduation. To me. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, so we know about you in Hopkinton uh, recently because of your writing. You have been doing some creative writing that is very powerful and that has brought you into Hopkinton's view a bit and even beyond down the road in Framingham. And I'm aware of that because uh, this involves creative writing and so I have seen you as have many others in Hopkinton and beyond sharing some of your own writing already in eighth grade. Uh, when did you start to write in a creative way? I started writing uh, since fourth grade. That's, uh -huh. that's when my writing habits really developed. Mm -hmm. I started practicing in school. We had many writing projects. I started writing at home. Mm -hmm. uh, before fourth grade, I wasn't very fond of writing in, th in third. Uh, their teaching methods of the teachers weren't really exact correct. And uh, uh, the, for the, the fourth grade teachers really got me inspired and I decided to try a few pieces on my own. Oh, uh -huh. And were you in Hopkinton in fourth grade or in Framingham? I was in Framingham. Framingham. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> And so it took off in fourth grade, and I know uh, I asked you to bring a piece of your writing a poem. Did you write that this year? I wrote it last year. Last year in seventh yeah. grade. And yeah. would you begin by sharing this poem? Absolutely. Ode to Rain. O water from the heavens, how I love the grace in which you fall. You quench earth's thirst. You bring us life droplets dancing in the sky, partnered with neighboring trade winds, a ballet nothing short of divine. O oh, water from the heavens, you caress from the sky like pounding hooves of a horse. How I love the music you create. You bless us with your symphony, a gentle splat for woodwinds, a heavy pound for brass, your good friend Thunder joins in on bass, adding lightning's flashes, the concert completes. O oh, water from the heavens, how I love the serenity you create. You wash away the stress, you say the same magic in all beings. By virtue of transcendental devotion, you cleanse out the soul carefree and without worry. While you gently kiss our skin, a total state of bliss to contemplate our lives. Beautiful. Thank you. I remember you have read it at HCAM Studios in Hopkinton, I believe twice, and how powerful it was. Uh, you recited it even. Uh, what inspired such an amazing poem? I uh, I always I always loved uh, rainbows and, and rain, mm -hmm. and uh, I I just loved I just loved the magic that was created by rain when as it as it fell down to the earth. Mm -hmm. uh, it means it means a lot to me. It means a lot to nature, and and I definitely I definitely treasure those moments. It sounds uh, like you are uh, you do love nature. I do the very much. Of outdoors. Yep. We are here, as I mentioned, in Hopkinton, um, and I'm wondering if you have a favorite spot first in the world uh, that's related, makes you think of being outdoors in nature. Uh, 
whether you've seen it in books or for real, uh, you've been there. Uh, Yellowstone National Park. Uh -huh. And have yeah. you been there? I have not. You I have, have not. not. Uh -huh. Yeah, we, we are planning a trip to go there, but uh, in, in my opinion, that's, that's where you can see all animals. That's where, that's where uh, all, that's just where all nature begins, uh -huh. in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Yep. So the animals speak to you. Anything else about the park? Uh, the uh, the different landforms and uh, uh, weather conditions they they may they they may not seem so beautiful but to me to me everything created in Earth is is definitely made with great hands. Mm -hmm. Well, how about here in Hopkinton? Uh, do you have a favorite spot uh, out in nature around here? I do. Uh, I I do like uh, the Hopkinton State Park Lake. Mm -hmm. Uh, that is my favorite place to visit there, and uh, I do. I love seeing beyond the horizon line and uh, just, just uh, contemplating uh, the beauty of nature. Mm -hmm. So it inspires you, and obviously inspires your writing. Yes. <laughs> How about? Uh, are there other things you like to do when you're outdoors besides get inspired to write? Uh, uh, I do. This uh, period in your life. <laughs> I do. Uh, we we do love we love to go boating. Uh, we we do go we we do go for hikes. Um, we do we do go for sailing and uh, just uh, just regular outdoor swimming. Mm -hmm. um, and and of course we do like to invite family members to uh, come join us. Mm -hmm. And we all we all go together and mainly just stay outdoors. Mm -hmm. And yep. I understand you're involved in sports as well as the arts. Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. What have you been doing in sports in Hopkinton? I have, uh, in, in school actually, I have been playing uh, volleyball and uh, some basketball mm -hmm. in, um, in, in our, in our uh, regular gym. Mm -hmm. uh, in, art, in arts, I have been joining some writing groups. Mm -hmm. I have, uh, I have uh, submitted some artworks oh. that, were, mm -hmm. uh, that, that they weren't auctioned or actually prized. They were just uh, they were just for uh, display. Mm -hmm. Well, and congratulations, uh, that is important thank you. as well. Thank you. So you're really uh, exploring out in different directions yes. at this point in your yeah. life and in school and soon to go on to high school. And yeah. is there any area that you're especially excited about in the academic world, in thinking of going on to school? Uh, I, am, I am thinking of majoring in science and uh, uh, perhaps mathematics. Uh, and that's, you mean later in college, toward college and later life? Yeah, toward college. Uh -huh. um, uh, I, do, uh, I, d I do have some great ambitions for myself, uh, of course. Like what? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, do, I do plan to go uh, in medical uh -huh, or, okay. or perhaps engineering. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they, do, they fascinate me so much. Mm -hmm. I, I, just, I just ponder over it, over it every day. Mm -hmm. um, I, uh, so that would be how the body works, as well as how uh, inventions of humans yes. work as well, engineering. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's a lot to cover. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, to me, exploring, uh, especially moving out outwards, is it's definitely a definition of a well-rounded person, mm -hmm. not just a well-rounded student who just uh, who just focuses on one topic, but mm -hmm. uh, just uh, just a well-rounded person who actually goes out to explore mm -hmm. and perhaps make decisions on his own. Mm -hmm. Well, it seems like you sure are paving the road uh, yeah. toward that <laughs> and your interest in exploration in life. And I understand you also play piano? I do. Uh -huh. So you I must do. Uh, like music? Uh, I do. To some degree? Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, music in my opinion it flows very well with uh, nature and uh, mm -hmm. just life's wonders and it just brings everything to life. Mm -hmm. Well, you uh, also have music in your writing of poetry, mm -hmm. I can tell. Yeah. And I also know about you that uh, you uh, shared your the same poem over at Amazing Things Art Studio as well as here within Hopkinton. So, and uh, sounded very musical on stage with the lights on mm -hmm. you there as well. So your music and your words uh, and your appreciation of uh, mm -hmm. all that is within our world has been radiating out from Hopkinton and um, I know that you are, from your writing, a bit of a philosopher as well, mm -hmm. uh, that you think deeply about things um, already. 
at your age, if I might say, just entering high school. And um, I'm curious about what you like to read that might inspire uh, your thinking at deep levels. Um, it's a good question. I, I, do, I do read uh, much of Aristotle, Aristotle's writings. Mm -hmm. uh, I, am, I am deeply inspired by uh, Greek mythology. I have, I have started getting into that, so I, I do know a bit about it. Um, I have, I, I do love to read uh, biographies and uh, uh, pretty much, pretty much any genre of any book. Mm -hmm. um, so just, just basically combining all those elements, I, I think that's just, that's just how deep a thinker I am. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I try not, I try not to uh, put too much philosophy in my work, otherwise uh, not only does it overdo it, it just, uh, it just, it just comes to believe that uh, I'm I'm just based I'm just a girl who's based on thought, not experiments. Oh, I like that. So it's uh -huh. uh, it's also <laughs> important to be experimental. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. Well, that's a great quote. Oh, thank you. Uh, yes. Uh, and then there is uh, summertime to come yes. and fun be before you dig into high school studies yes. as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but in looking back at your time in high school, uh, not high school, in school here in Hopkinton and Framingham. Uh, can you think of a, a, a favorite moment of learning or something you particularly learned that will stay with you forever, uh, whether academic or uh, some sort of life lesson within school? Um, I, have, I have learned the true meaning of friendship mm -hmm. and, uh, and where, where it exactly follows you in life. Um, and it, it does, it, it, just, it just goes with it just goes with every 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 aspect of life, mm -hmm. um, yes. and uh, and uh, definitely the uh, teacher teacher to student relationship. Mm -hmm. Some some teachers definitely really really inspire you to follow your dreams, and mm -hmm. and I and I and I just think, uh, I mean, uh, whether whether students may think uh, a teacher may not be may not be what they seem to be, they they definitely do have something deep inside them. Mm -hmm that can one day actually uh, just make you look back on life and say, wow, she Thanks. was, she definitely really inspired me today. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. and, I am, I, and I am what I am because of this person. Mm -hmm. Well, that's uh, very well said. And it sounds like you are on the path to many good things as well as uh, seem to be a natural author uh, speaking, just speaking out words that could be on text already. So Thank I you. look forward to what you'll be writing next year and beyond. And I know you have a piece of writing that I've asked you to share today, and it's also about the importance of family, which I know resonates strongly with you in your life. You've already talked about enjoying spending time with your family, and yes. that's been valuable to you. And you wrote this piece as a tribute to your grandmother, really, from your father's voice. Could you tell me a sentence or two what inspired you to write this? I, I have actually, uh, my, my grandmother was deceased in 2005. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, based, on, based on my uh, childhood experience, I had, I, had no, I had no idea whatsoever on what, re what death really means. Mm -hmm. I, I just basically uh, inputted that into this piece of writing based on my father's behalf and what, what he feels. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just uh, basically, I, I have just inputted my, my belief on what my father feels about his, his mother and my grandmother. So this is a story he told you and then you thought about it and wrote it in your own yes. words, but it is your yeah. father's voice. Yes, okay. I, I have I have added some uh, I did add some uh, voices of uh, of his words actually um, some of his own his authentic words as well. But yeah. you are the writer, and it yeah. is your father's voice. I just want to clarify. Yeah. And now, if you would please read this to us, we have about ten minutes, and uh, with it's a great, beautiful story and tribute. Thank you. A humble tribute to my mother. Like thousands of birds that frequented the bird feeder of my mother's garden, my mother was not hindered by the gravity of the heart. The mother is, indubitably, a divine gift to the mankind. She is an embodiment of love, affection, and compassion. 
She is an icon of adoration. She is full of unrestricted warmth and kindness. There's always a deep hole at the bottom in a mother's heart, exists the paradise of forgiveness. The life began with me by opening my eyes in the lap of my mother and her poignant heart that was as deep as the ocean itself. During my early childhood years, my mother taught us good culture, moral instructions, decent manners, and virtuous habits. She always believed that these are very important building blocks for our future. She fought the odds. She sacrificed her time, her money, and her joys only to care for us. I never considered adequate to touch her feet and seek her benedictions. Nevertheless, she was opulently gracious, the best next to the God Almighty. I remember her soft palms running through my body when I was sick and the charming scent of sandalwood soap from her hands. Fragrance of fresh bread and corn filled my mother's kitchen. Laughter and happiness flowed into the peaceful kitchen. Lines upon her face had features slashed of hard times. Lines around her eyes had wrinkles of hard times she had passed through in her life. Her face had a rosy complexion with jam-packed warm. The morning light gave her a crown that danced around her dark hair. Her sweet voice was gifted with the voice of the whales by God. I annoyed her sometimes. I was rude to her at some other times. I was depressed. I was obstinate. But I never had the chance to comprehend my true potentials. She was the only one I could rely on for my needs. In short, she was everything to me. After spending 30 years of my life with my mother, I left for America with anxiety in the quest of a promising future. I was confident that all would be fighting fit at home. She suggested it would be wise to settle down in the Americas where her relations by blood were well settled and that would for sure lend me enormous help in boosting my future career. In her eyes, I could see how much she wanted me to stay, but her heart relented. Trying not to break into tears, my mother wished me a good future ahead and saw me leave right when I turned my back, but to no avail. We stood there for moments, embracing each other's hearts. I could see my childhood passing away into my mom's eyes, how I wished it would come back. When the plane was ready to depart, I squeezed my mom's hand tightly and vanished without looking at the tangible hurt my mother was then feeling, like nebula gas twisting inside her. I recalled my childhood and all the good times we had alone together. I started to contemplate about what more I could have done for her as a child and how more I could have appreciated her. How I could have shared her pain and sorrows and told her how much I love her. With a single tear in my eye, I disappeared into the horizon line. I knew in my heart my mother deserved much better. When I set my foot on the soil of America for the first time, my mind rebelled for a moment for the return ticket. This isn't my beautiful home that is surrounded by bamboo and crop fields with grazing cows. This isn't the place where I'm meant to be. I entered my new home and knew this isn't the place where the foreigners will accept me. I started my new job in Greenpoint where everybody from different nations of the world accepted me for who I am. I didn't understand English but nevertheless, I made a place in everyone's hearts. While other people would mock at my improper pronunciation of English, I didn't mind, for it amused me to look at different people's strength of character. My mother called daily to check in on me and I felt compelled to speak to her. Her sweet voice reminded me of my beautiful home quite often. I couldn't tell her about my intent to return home for she would refuse firmly and disappointment would ample her eyes. 
I was ready to set my foot back to home, my hometown in India, where the Saturn is visible to the naked eyes. I worked each day to save up enough money until my uncle came along the way. He advised me to stay here and gave me tips on how to make a living in America. By following his teachings, I settled for good without having an opportunity to see my mother ever again in my life. On the night of September 3rd, 2005, the starry night looked out on a balcony on a cold, breezy day with eyes that knew the darkness in my soul. The phone call I got from my brother made me sit frozen to the feet with feelings of severe despair. I heard the oppressive silence of lies. I heard my mother's cries. I heard the astonishing th truth. I experienced the feelings of a restless mind. I realized I am still, even after re her release, extremely indebted to her. I never could understand her feelings or her thoughts. For the first time, I was worried that self-consciousness will be my downfall in the future. The gentle smiles that had recalled childhood dreams still do live. Her kindly movements lit up dark corners of my life. I never could tell her how much I really loved her. One day, I hope she recognizes my true soul and emotions above. Regret filled my head with anger and no forgiveness. I never could see her moonlit face again. Regret for my arrival to the Americas pondered through my head. When I finally saw my mother's face engraved in the moon, I finally understood my true self. Maybe that is why they say, look upon your mother as a god in Indian culture. Shadows hovered over the hills that night. Even the moon swelled in its orange icons, staring down upon me with its glimmering moonlight. I could feel her spirit watching over me. I could see my mother's beautiful face in the moon's ivory light. Childhood dreams and warmth were tight in my throat with tears in my eyes. Bittersweet tears and mellow, silvery laughter, it ached in my heart. The kindness was filled in the house with her footsteps, which can never be replaced now. The night boiled with eleven stars, with swirling clouds and violent haze, flaming flowers that brightly blazed into my eyes. It seemed like even the heavens were ashamed of separating mother and son and the bonds that were once united. To this day, it took me 36 years to realize what an extraordinary influence my mother had been on my life. She was the kind of person who always had time for her four children, the woman who shared her pain and sorrows with us, the one who told us inspiring stories as we grew up, and the kind of community leader who always had time to assist India's impoverished citizens. Growing up with I developed many of her enthusiasms. I not only came to love the excitement of learning simply for the sake of knowing something new, but I also came to understand the idea of giving back to the community in exchange for a new sense of life, love, and a spirit. I saw my soul being bared through poetry, love, and music. Everything that my mother has ever done has been overshadowed by the thought about it. While the raw experiences I have had at home and abroad have been spectacular, I have learned to truly value them by watching my mother. She enriched my life with her passion for learning and changed it with her devotion to humanity. In her endless love of everything and everything she is touched by, I have seen a hope and life that is truly exceptional. Thank you. Wow, well, that is just beautiful uh, piece of writing uh, and such a great tribute uh, 
that you have uh, the gift and the art of conveying from your father telling a story and then putting into words uh, what a great legacy for your grandmother and for your father and uh, for you. Uh, three generations worth, a wonderful way of storytelling uh, about uh, part of your family history there. Uh, it's very unique and, oh, and thank you. Uh, beautiful and of hope. Um, so thank you for sharing that. And Absolutely. I, I just hope it inspires many other students to maybe make a tribute or at least uh, or at least or at least uh, fit poetry in, into their essays mm. because poetry is just a divine gift and it can definitely lighten up any any sort of essay in any in any way in any way you actually want it to be well so. that's a very good ending <laughs> <laughs> thank you uh, and um, it's such beautiful writing and what uh, do you have any uh, writing project uh, next on your summer agenda I uh, in, in summer we do uh, we do receive some summer reading from the high school okay. as of as of now actually we uh, we just finished the to kill a mockingbird a beautiful story about a lawyer and his children yes. and uh, racial discriminations in uh, the county of Maycomb, which is actually just fictional in, in this story well maybe it will inspire some more uh, of your important for the world writing as well as poetic mm -hmm. uh, I look yes. forward to hearing and reading more from you. And I thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you for having me. Hi, I'm Cheryl Peralt, host of the program Meet Your Neighbor on HCAM TV. This show introduces you to Hopkinton residents, the many interesting people who are our neighbors, and we invite them to share stories, experiences, insights, and observations from their lives. We'd like to hear who you think should be interviewed on our program. So if you know someone that Hopkinton should get to know more about, please email me and stay tuned for more episodes of Meet Your Neighbor on EdgeCam TV. My husband thinks social drinking relaxes him, but he's still ready to fight. Are you troubled by someone's drinking? You might be surprised at what you could learn in an Al-Anon family group meeting from people just like you. Call 1-888-4-ALANON or visit alanonfamilygroups.org.